Can you hear me? All right. Uh, thanks for being here. Uh, so today's goal here is going to be to talk to the new foundation. Um, so the, the old foundation existed for a long time, and now things are changing a bit. And so the, the goal of here is to ask questions. I'm going to be asking questions. I have some questions from the internet, and then we're going to take questions from the public as well. So I'm just going to start a bit. Um, so maybe for Elko as a first question, you know, do you remember you were still at uni, I think, when you created the foundation? Uh, no, I wasn't. You were already out of uni? Yeah. So no, I was not at the university. I was at Logic Blocks at the time. All right. Do you remember? So 2015, uh, I remember. 2015. Correctly. Do you remember what prompted you to create the foundation? Um, basically, we needed a way to collect donations. And I think at the time, we didn't have stuff like uh, Open Collective. Um, so we uh, believed that we needed a legal entity for that. Um, so we uh, just went to a notary and uh, drafted some statutes. And, uh, and that was it. Cool. Um, I guess I'm going to take the next question from uh, the discourse. Uh, there's a uh, core fury that asked the next ecosystem and Nexus in particular rely a lot on volunteers and some companies investing in the platform for themselves. The, this leads to some necessary but some work being neglected, neglected like the security roundups when volunteer goodwill falls behind the relentless work. Is this something the foundation is looking to improve or and how? Um, I, I think that would be great, but right now we don't really have uh, yet the uh, sort of the financial, uh, um, um, what's the word, the, uh, the cash to, uh, to hire people basically, maybe for small projects. Mm -hmm. Um, but not say full-time employees, uh, like say the, the Rust Foundation uh, really funds people, or uh, the, 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 uh, the Haskell Foundation. Um, uh, so we're not there yet. Uh, cool. But maybe uh, maybe you can talk a little bit about what the foundation is already doing. I'll add some color to that. So I think while we don't necessarily yet have funding to start hiring people, we're definitely looking to structure out the the way that we handle sponsorship and donations. Uh, I don't know if some of you have seen, we started to post like meeting minutes and, and the things that we're talking about. One of the main topics is actually looking into turning Nick's and the Nick's foundation to have charitable status, uh, which is something that we don't have right now and kind of potentially could optimize or encourage uh, larger foundations from larger companies that are looking to get that charitable status. On the other, I think other end of that question, while we're not yet hiring people full time, because uh, I would love to hire uh, the person who gave the talk about why do you talk to your friends about Nix. Um, while we're not doing that, we are looking to like promote and structure and empower teams to be able to do that with throughout through the volunteers. Um, maybe you want to talk a bit more about what are the things you're already doing, like uh, maybe some of Nix or. Things like that. <laughs> so, what is the board currently doing? This is the yeah. question. Um, so, right now we're kind of stretched out. Um, one of the one of part of the work that is kind of blocking the rest is actually transitioning from the previous board to the new one, and you know legalities and all that stuff, um, and getting. Uh, um, transitioning from Rob, who is going to, to depart the, the board and, you know, transferring the accounting that he has been doing and so on. Um, Ron has initiated uh, the work to do team empowerment so that we are more transparent to each other, who is working on what and, and, and kind of keeping track of, of meeting minutes and things like that. And, and just signaling to, to the community where there's work to be needed, which actually I think answers the previous question where 
um, we're trying to kind of to, to build the structure without the structure um, so that we can have people signal and, and call out when there's help needed in a certain team. And, you know, in the worst case, escalate that to, to the board in, if there's um, not possible to solve something in the team. Um, we've been working on a kind of like roadmap for that, you know, we think is, is important and the vision of the Nix project, which we will, you know, open up and try to, to get feedback from you based on what we think and, you know, to kind of feedback that in. Um, I'm sure I forgot stuff. Uh, yeah, so actually one of the biggest things that uh, the uh, Nixrest Foundation does is that we're a partner in uh, NGI Zero, which is this uh, uh, European Commission, uh, I think Horizon 2020 project to, uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> rebuild the internet, uh, make everything better. Uh, and so usually, historically, uh, these projects were uh, uh, large grants uh, that could only be obtained by uh, universities or consortiums of uni consortia of universities and big companies uh, and they were out of reach for say a single open source developer uh, who is hacking on some project uh, and NGI zero enables them so you can apply to an NGI grant uh, for say 50,000 euros and uh, use that to uh, to to hack on something for a year um, and uh, so uh, the Nixwest Foundation is part of the consortium that uh, supports uh, the infrastructure for the project. And what we do is we provide uh, packaging for uh, those hundreds of NGI projects um, to make sure that they're uh, sort of reproducible and that everybody can actually run the uh, products of those uh, projects. Um, and uh, now, again, uh, since the Nixwest Foundation was only three people and uh, we were uh, starved for time uh, for several years, we uh, didn't really have the ability to execute that very well. Uh, so a couple of times we hired people like Jonas to do some packaging, but it was uh, still going slowly. And then next year, or last year, we uh, uh, started organizing the Summer of Nix uh, with uh, uh, Matthias uh, somewhere here, I think. Uh, uh, did uh, uh, incredible amounts of work on that uh, to, uh, yeah, uh, let uh, sort of patterned after the uh, the summer of code, the Google summer of code. Uh, so uh, get, had, get people to hack for a couple of weeks over the summer, uh, get something new out of it, and also, uh, yeah, well, learn something about Nix and get, uh, get some education out of that. Uh, and uh, yeah, that, that has been super helpful. Um, and I can mention that uh, there are a couple of new NGI zero rounds. Uh, so I think two new or three projects, I think for something like 10 million euros. So there are, I don't know, don't quote me on the exact amount. But so if you have an interesting idea that you want to work on, then you should uh, consider applying for an NGI zero grant. And uh, yeah, so th there are a couple of NICS related projects that have been uh, done through NGI zero. Uh, Last statement, I promise on this question. At the end of the day, we're like, I view it as we have, there's tech debt, we have, we have board debt, and we need to pay it. So I'm kidding. Okay. Um, so really, it's like taking all that board debt that I've, has kind of accumulated over the years, right? And really churning the board into a, a service to the community and the project. So there's a lot of things that were mentioned here that are just like, we have to get it done, right? So that's all. So that leads to the next question I had. Where, where is, what is the interface between the board and the community? You know, are you gonna be influencing the decision-making process of the various projects or are you just here to help bring the funds to different projects? I don't know. I'll answer and pass it to TFM. Um, really, the, I think that's a good segue, right? The, the board is in service of the project and the community. So what that means for us is we each take from our time voluntarily completely 
to go and invest back into more of the macro level of things, right? Making sure that the NIC survey runs, making sure that we can create structure for team empowerment, but really the bottom, the core value, that the way that I view it, and I'm sure that others here on the panel with me have potentially different opinions, is that we're here to set NICs up for success, and that's a very ambiguous term that just has a lot of meaning to it. Um, so in terms of do we make decisions, hell no. Uh, we can't. We, I mean, everyone does whatever they want to do. We're just here to kind of help push it along, help answer the questions that you have, and ideally, once we're fully optimized, take your feedback and, and get that shit done. Yeah, uh, so yeah, yeah. I think some very important point that uh, just uh, Ron just mentioned is that we can't be making any decision even if we wanted to because, I mean, we're an open source community. People do whatever they want. Um, but yeah, the thing that we can help with and that we've been trying very hard to do in the past few months is just to give the, the structure so that people can make their own decisions um, so uh, like the whole team empowerment work, which is just starting to emerge, uh, thanks to uh, Ron's instances so on particular on getting the, the details ready and that we're now beta testing on a few teams are, I think, uh, like a, a good representation of um, what the, the board should look like and how, how we should help the community. Not, um, like not doing any of the of the technical work ourselves, or not taking any decisions on that, but really providing the framework so that teams can emerge and people can step up and say that yeah, I, I want to be involved in that project, get the the leverage, and maybe like get the authority to take decisions on some on, of or some aspect because I'm gonna build up the expertise and the credibility to take these decisions myself. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> The old board is me and Armin Hamel uh, and Rob from us. Who's with us in uh, spirit? He's actually working on this one right now. Are you, uh, uh, Armin or Rob? Ar Armin is just, okay. uh, working on this right now. And so, uh, so that was a free person board. The new board uh, is still me and Armin uh, and these three guys. Um, you can do a picture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, yeah. so to yeah. say who I am, yeah, so I started with Nick. And the, uh, also in the, the old board. Uh, so Armin started NixOS as his master's thesis project way back, and he serves as our uh, secretary. Uh, Rob from us is still formally on the board. Uh, he serves as its treasurer, but uh, he, he would like to quit, so we need to find a new treasurer, ideally somebody who knows about Dutch accounting and tax law and stuff like that. Um, uh, I'll let the other guys introduce themselves. Yeah, so I'm Theofan. Uh, I, I didn't start Nix. Uh, <laughs> I hope I'm not going to end it either. Uh, but I, I've been a, a Nix contributor for some time now. Uh, I'm working at Twig and uh, well, I've recently stepped up as a board member and also um, but member of the new Nix maintenance team, um, which gives me two hearts. So as a, as a board member, I won't be taking any decision. I'm just going to empower myself to take decisions <laughs> as a Nix maintainer. I guess for, uh, you work for Tweak, um, and our mind works for a child or consulting. Uh, so I'm um, Doman. I, I think I entered the community about almost 10 years ago. It's been quite a long time. Um, too late to start Nix, but um, and yeah, I've been I don't know. I've been Nixos release manager for a few releases, I think. And um, about four years ago, I started Cashix um, and kind of focused on improving the the infrastructure and documentation um, or developer experience, if you may call it. Um, 
yeah, that's more or less it. Hey, I'm Ron, uh, CEO and co-founder of Flux. The kind of my background, software engineer, IDF, intelligence units, then went into uh, startups a lot. Uh, built a kind of like a uh, traveling salesman algorithm for many to many, if you guys are familiar with that space. Uh, then uh, prior, what, what kind of brought me closer to Nix was that my previous position was uh, I led developer products at Facebook. So literally any product that developers used, any of our like 20,000, more than once a day, flowed through our like product teams at some level and we were really kind of focusing on how can we introduce better products, how we, can we empower developers and, and grow that, some open source, some not. Um, big on nonprofits, so just kind of my, my side hobby is I uh, also manage the largest Israeli tech nonprofit in California, 4,000 members. I love conferences. I love like organizing these things, but Ryan is better than that at me apparently, and so is Alexandra. Uh, with that, uh, I then uh, joined kind of the Facebook journey, took me to the realm of uh, developer on demand where we built a, uh, we completely replicated the iOS tool chain on uh, Linux in order to abstract away kind of uh, remote development that kind of brought me into the next realm and into uh, uh, partnering with uh, Michael. But that's my quick background. I'm the furthest, furthest from here. I live in California. Any other questions about us, hobbies? Any, any other questions from the public? Uh, good question. So the question is, how come the board is made of these people? How did you decide on the people that were on the board? Um, yeah, so we wanted something that is kind of representative of the, um, uh, the, the various big stakeholders in the community. So that's uh, uh, they have several companies, but also it represents uh, the project as has existed for a long time, so the open source community. Uh, so yeah, there's there's uh, sort of uh, no no company has a uh, undue weight on the board. So uh, there's one person maximum uh, maximum of one person per company. Uh, so that's that was kind of the uh, consideration. And I think at the end of the day, right, this might be, I don't know how, how this sits, but at the end of the day, we're trying to push Nix to the next level, right? I think we're all in agreement of that. We had, I think, many talks touched it, right? And I think the way I see it is ideally the board members not only have the capacity to actually fulfill and actionize on things. So obviously none of us are getting paid for this and we're doing this while having you know families and jobs and, and other responsibilities so we're each kind of contributing a chunk um, and ideally that maybe makes a whole person less technical but of course more on the like product and and structure side of strategy and things like that so so each of us kind of i see each one of the the folks standing sitting to the left of me um, as just bringing in viewpoints and, and interests that at the end of the day also represent, you know, an exhaustive view and an inclusive view of the community to some extent, because we can never get to 100, um, but also have meaningful value in like driving decisions. Yeah. Are there going to be elections in the future? Um, I think we, we talked that we did talk about that we want to introduce um, some system to that, but we haven't come to, to this yet. This is uh, something we have yet to, to define. Is this part of your goals to address maybe next year? Uh, yeah, yeah, the goal is, is to do this as soon as possible. Yeah. We, we, we started with like really critical things, as in um, things that are blocking the community, and then we will go to to define these things as well. Uh, any more questions? I think we kind of did the bit of a tour. Carbas.
How to attract more funding and how to spend it? Is that the question? So, so first of all, right now the problem of the nation is that we don't spend enough money um, rather than that we don't attract it enough. Um, so we, we have to define a bit, you know, where, where, what do we want to invest in as a, as a community? Um, and then we're also talking about um, introducing some kind of sponsorship packages that companies can, can uh, donate and support NICS and also um, in return gain, you know, see the transparency, how the foundation is doing and, and what are we investing in. Um, so again, a lot of backlog that we have to, to go through. So actually, uh, we a the the foundation also donated uh, I think ten thousand uh, to to Nixcon, but I think this was the first year that we were able to actually uh, this is like the the board debt that I was talking about actually handle all the Nixcon sponsorship from the board, something that we had to kind of figure out and took us a while, but we were able to do that and we intend to keep doing it. Other things that we're thinking about is um, what I mentioned about getting charitable status. So in terms of increasing the pipeline of, of sponsorship and, and funding. We need structure, like Doman mentioned, but we also need kind of like incentives. Um, and, you know, we've mentioned team empowerment a few times. We really want to make sure that we have a prioritization to the teams that are, you know, either, let's say, optimizing NICs or on the critical path for NICs and making sure that they're funded in the way that is optimizing the entire community. But that's just starting thoughts, but again, we're happy to get feedback and other areas that are worth looking into. Yeah, so one thing I forgot to mention, um, you know, we, I, I think we have Ocean Sprint um, planned very soon, and this is going to be the sixth NYX event that, that I've organized or co-organized. Um, but what I would really love to see is that the foundation would have some, some budgets to to allow anyone to, to say, oh, yeah, I'm organizing a meetup in London, you know, can you cover the beers or, you know, some drinks or something that, you know, would allow the event to happen and flow. Um, and I think that would be something within the scope of the foundation that we could, you know, support the, the community from this side and, and also um, support any kind of mixed related events. Um, again, a lot of things to define what, what counts and what would be the budget and so on, but this is, uh, so, so, yeah, one of the things. And we will answer. Right. Uh, one more question from the forum. Uh, you said that enabling teams to get the actual project work done is one of your top priorities. How specifically will you ensure that teams are supplied with the resources, like time, uh, board decision, advice funding, they need to work effectively? So actually, uh, I'm going to have a partial talk about that tomorrow, but spoilers, why not? Uh, we, we also made a post, by the way. We made a post, I know it was kind of in the craziness of NixCon, just like two days ago or something like that, where we kind of share a draft of our thoughts. The, to give a quick answer to that, I think it's going to be tough, because I think it's, I don't want to be too ambiguous, um, and take, also not take up too much time. At the end of the day, we have different you know, we have organically created teams inside that teams have organically created themselves. And I think that we as a board, I think the question is catered to the board, uh, have a certain responsibility, right? One is empowering the community itself to keep being a green field and keep being able to create more teams, collaborate and do the things that you guys want to do, to the, the things that we all want to do. The second responsibility I think is that making sure to recognize and prioritize which teams are on the critical path i.e. infra team or, or AWS buckets or something like if it falls tomorrow and no one can pick up the phone because that person, the only person with the access keys on vacation, that's not a good look. So I think it's, it's two-sided, right? Empowering the community, but also providing the structure and the funding and everything else to make sure that the critical path teams are optimized. Okay, maybe last question from uh, Payas. Some very important RFCs have been in discussion for hell for months, if not years. Um, what is the plan on making this whole process uh, move forward? Or is it something the foundation would address? Or is it separate? Um, that, that's a hard question. <laughs> um, 
I think that the RFC process, um, well, there, there are different sides to it. One is that the RFC process itself, I think, needs some improvement to to how it was. It was uh, inspired by Rust, but you know we're our own community, so we we need to figure out what works for us. Um, that's one part. Um, the second part is that some RFC will just not go through because you know either somebody gives up or or um, you know the kind of there's no decision to be made um and and sometimes i think the key is is when the rfc uh, gets a shepherd um it needs it needs to be clear to the community that that shepherd is kind of like the the the, the who guides the rfc to go forward so that's the responsibility of the person to to make sure to raise why things are blocked and so on um and the last note i would say there's often a big of a bit of lack of authority that people feel like they shouldn't, you know, step up and, and decide on something. And this is something that, that needs to be encouraged. Um, and that's something that is, is lacking um, that I've seen personally on those RFCs. Um, and unfortunately, the answer is there is no <laughs> one thing. If there would be one thing, it would be easy to solve. Um, but again, this is a good example of um, creating structure and, and raising things to the board and then you know we would try to talk to the people you know if this would be made more concrete which are the RFC we can go talk to these people and kind of figure out what's going on and, and you know raise proposals um, what could be improved in the process and, and so on um, yeah so to add to that uh, I, I think ideally the board wouldn't be making technical decisions um, so probably at some point we want to have some sort of core team that can make those technical decisions that are sort of cross-cutting for the entire project, like uh, whether to adopt flakes or something like that. Um, but <laughs> uh, I mean, the board is not really the, the place to uh, have that kind of uh, uh, discussion. Uh, but right now we don't really have uh, any mechanism to get uh, have decisions that are stuck, say, in, in the RFC process, but that are kind of critical for the success of the entire project uh, unstuck. So, uh, yeah, we need to figure out a way to improve that. Yeah, to, to add to that, I think, like, yeah, the RFC process is, I mean, it has its own problems, but it's something that exists in the community that definitely needs improvements, but is up to a certain extent working. And I, I mean, so I don't know exactly what the scope of the question was, but uh, if the question is, should the board like just chiming on a specific RFC and say, well, we as the board have decided that this RFC should pass, I think that uh, except in a very exceptional situation, uh, well, and I don't have a, any, an example yet, like that would be uh, going beyond what the board is supposed to be doing. Uh, like the RFC process exists for a reason. And if it's stuck, then we need to help it. I mean, we, the, the community, need to help it they get unstuck. But it's not the, the role of the board to just take decisions instead of the of the RFC process. Uh, now, the thing I think where the board can help, uh, like Domen said, is just uh, support the RFC team um, in getting through the process and uh, provide any kind of help that can be needed to refine that process where it needs to be. Um, maybe even provide some, yeah, we discussed a bit of the financial matter. If I don't like that, I, I could even easily imagine a case where some RFC gets stuck because everyone agrees that it's a great idea, but no one is able to implement that. And that's also potentially something where the board could help if there's a, if there's a clear consensus that that's something that would be beneficial to the community. Okay, the clock is ticking, so I'll let Jonas for the next question. One more question? Okay, did I forget to ask any question or something you wanted to talk about that uh, we didn't get to address? Yeah? Uh, yes. Okay, what were some of the critical issues uh, you had to organize the next board for eventually? I think one uh, was 
AWS buckets. We don't own them, but we need to create structure around that in order to make sure that we own that and then we can actually mitigate and resolve any issues fast. The current standpoint, it's not there, right? That's just an example of like the board debt that I was talking about earlier. In terms of, that's, that's like a really niche example, but at, at the micro, I think, you know, I hope I, I don't offend anyone and of course, especially not, not the previous board, but I think the board needs to be here more, right? While no one here is getting, well, not no one, there are companies that pay people full-time salaries to, to work on Nix full-time, but we don't, you know, we're all volunteers at the end of the day and there needs to be some sort of like, I don't wanna say we're kind of here to do anything that needs to be done in order to support the community, but that's kind of what it is, right? So I think uh, going back to the example of, uh, of team empowerment as an example, Right, we kind of expedited through that because that was a need that we felt can really help out the community and unblock some areas. Uh. So, so to connect the previous question to this one, I would say like, um, you know, I, I know that a lot of people are unhappy with the Flakes RFC and how. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, and, and with the, we told Brian to do that when we get to play. <laughs> <laughs> with, the, with the new uh, Nix team, um, the communication will flow, you know, week to week, uh, and these kind of issues can be raised sooner rather than too late. Um, and, and I personally believe that a lot of these issues come from the lack of communication, and so either that would be, you know, the community raising up issues to the board, but ideally to the team that is, you know, part of the ecosystem. And, and that, that's a great example of, you know, like Ron said, what we need to do and, and the things that we see from the community coming as issues and, you know, put that structure into that so that it's not just, you know, up in the air and open to whoever wants to do it, which is great, but sometimes there needs to be a bit more structure to it. I have a question back to the folks in the room. Who do you escalate to when an RFC hasn't passed for a few years? Right? So, so exactly, like we're not gonna make decisions, but ideally we'll provide that escalation pass, for instance, right? That, that kind of go-to, and then we meet weekly. We each kind of even give, I would say, 20 to 15% of our time on a weekly basis to these things and surface these things, and you know, we're here to tackle them and see what we can do. Can't promise anything, but it's kind of what we're here for. All right, thank you, everyone. We're good.